Hello, it's Ron Clymer. I'm back again for questions 41 through 45. The homework or end of in this book, Modern Real Estate Practice in North Carolina. So I thought we'd come back and knock out a few more problems today. Uh, that's my phone number if you need me, Ron Clymer at yahoo.com if you need me. And um, let's just see. I'm on page 753, and I'm doing question number 41. And it says the seller received a $121,600 check at the closing table. After paying a 7% commission, $31,000 in other closing costs, and $135,700 loan payoff, what was the total sales price? Alright, so uh, let me erase this and well, I guess the eraser doesn't want to work in the cold weather. Y'all know I'm out here on my front porch. Anyway, never had that problem before, but let's see. It says uh, our hero paid, our hero got a check at closing for $121,600. That was the check to the seller, his net proceeds. Now, he also paid $31,000 in closing cost. Alright, so this is the seller's check, and this is his closing cost. And he had to pay off his old mortgage, which was $135,700. So he paid that off. Well, let's sum those three numbers and see what they come to. Alright, we got his check, $121,600, plus the $31,000 in outrageous closing costs, plus $135,700 to pay off his old mortgage. So all of this money amounted to $288,000. $300. And uh, so that is all the money except the commission. So the commission was 7%. The commission was 7%. So if we subtract that from 100%, we will recognize that this money here is 93% of the sale price. That's 93% of the sale price, all right? If we knew the sale price times 0.93, it would give us $288,300. So, if we do that arithmetic backwards and divide that by 0.93, all right, let's see. I got 288,300 right there on the face of the calculator divided by 0.93 comes to $310,000. By the way, could you have done that problem by going down to the four answers, taking choice A, compute the commission, compute, subtract the seller check, subtract the closing cost, and subtract the payoff, only one of those numbers would have come to zero. And that would have been 310, the right answer. Any other number would not. In fact, you might want to go back and check your work by doing that. Not a bad plan, and I'd do it if I wasn't having so much trouble erasing my board today. So I don't know what that's all about. 
Uh, all right, let me see if I can get it erased here. Let's see. Our next question says a fence is being built to enclose a lot that's 125 feet by 350. We're going to put in a 10 foot put a 10 foot gate. So, how many feet of fence do we need? Well, we need 125 on the front plus 125 on the back plus 350 on one side, plus 350 on the other side. Uh, let's sum these numbers and see what we get. Uh, Alright, using the calculator. 125 plus 125 plus 350 plus 350 is 950 feet around the perimeter of that lot. But don't forget, we've got a 10 foot gate. So that's 10 feet where we're not going to need a fence. So the answer is 940 feet of fence. So we're going to need 940 feet of fence to take care of that. So on the front, on the back, plus the side, plus the other side, 950 minus the gate gives us 940 feet. All right. for a new board. Maybe go inside. Wow. That's a bunch of trouble. <clears throat> Number 43. A buyer gave 2500 each for four parcels of land. He subdivides these into six parcels and sells each of the six parcels for $1,950 per parcel, I assume. Uh, what was the buyer's percent of profit? Now, y'all remember the formula is cost over profit. Or if you learned this from me, the formula is what you made over what you paid. What you paid being another word for profit, or excuse me, what you paid, I've lost my mind. I got these upside down. Good thing I remember them the way I do. The profit goes on the top and the cost goes on the bottom. What you've made over what you paid makes more sense to me. Well, let's see. We paid $2,500 each. $2,500 each times four lots. So we paid $10,000. All right. So what we paid is $10,000, then we turned around and subdivided this into six smaller pro properties and sold them for, let's see if I can find somewhere to work here, we sold them for $1,950 a piece times six parcels. So we sold it for 
$11,700. So we sold it for $11,700. So we bought it for $10,000. We sold it for eleven seven. dollars So we made $1,700. What you made, $1,700, divided by what you paid, 10,000 and the calculator says 17%. So we made a 17% profit uh, on that deal. What you made over what you paid. Keep it simple. Don't use those fancy words, they confuse even me. So uh, what you made over what you paid. Percent of profit. And I, well, let me knock out one more. Uh, let me see if I can get this thing erased. <coughs> All right, let me see. Property sells for $9,600. It's appreciated 4% per year for the past five years. What did the owner pay for the property five years ago? All right, so it's gone up 4% per year for five years. So it's gone up 20%. So $96,000, that's what we just paid for it is a hundred and twenty percent of what we bought it for five years ago. In other words, if we knew what we paid for it five years ago times a hundred and twenty percent, that would tell us, that would give us ninety-six thousand. So if we take the ninety-six thousand and divide it by a hundred and twenty percent, now, 120% as a decimal looks like that, 1.2. All right, let's try that. 96,000 divided by 1.2, and the calculator says $80,000. So we paid $80,000 for it five years ago. By the way, let's check our work. If we times that number by 1.2, Will that give us 96,000? Well, let's try it on the calculator here. And, whoops. 80,000 times 1.2 gives you 96,000. Always go back and check your work. You don't want to be taking this state exam but one time. So go back and check your work. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Since I'm having trouble with my board, I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, I'll figure it out between now and next time. And I'll get the last six problems put up um, pretty soon. And um, yeah, let me go ahead and do the next one. What the heck. Um, it's a, I should be able to get it on about half the board here. So It says a woman makes $60,000 a year. She makes $60,000 a year on her job, and her husband makes $2,400 per month. So how much can they pay in a mortgage payment if the lender uses a 28% qualifying ratio? Now, I assume that you know that your mortgage payment can only be a certain percent, in this case, 28% of your monthly income. So the guy is making $2,400 per month, given in the question. His wife is making $60,000 a year. Well, $60,000 a year divided by 12, 12 months is $5,000 a month. So she's making $5,000 a month and he's making $2,400 a month. So their combined income is $7,400 $7, 
per month. Now, the mortgage company says that you can only pledge 28% of your income for a house payment. So, let's take this number here times 28%, and the biggest house payment they're going to be able to make is... biggest house payment they're going to be able to make is 7400 time point 28 is that right 28 yeah 28 percent and so that is two thousand and seventy two dollars house payment and it doesn't ask or tell you in the book but in real life that's PITI so that's principal interest taxes insurance the mortgage company believe if your payment's higher than that, you'll probably be defaulted. And they're probably right. So, uh, all right, so that's questions 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. And uh, I wish you luck on your North Carolina real estate exam.